What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to our channel, guys. I'm Rod. I'm here with my dad. Rod Sr. And we are Bridging, Bridging the, the gap. gap. Yes, sir. The boys is back with another fire reaction video for you. If you enjoy our reaction videos, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Also, drop a comment and let us know what we should react to next. Make sure you turn on your post notifications so every time we drop a new video, you are informed. And if you like our videos but you want to see the uncut, unedited versions, check out our Patreon. The link is in the description. And uh, we just dropped some new merch, so check that out. We've got coffee mugs, T-shirts, hoodies. Really cool merch, right? Dope merch, Pop. So, uh, yeah, you guys should check that out and support the channel. Take some pictures with your merch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send those in, and we'll post them on our socials, on Instagram and stuff. But, uh, okay, today, Dad, we're going to listen to a rapper that I don't believe that uh, you've heard. Ah, you, you heard him. You probably don't remember. It was... Um, he had a really standout verse on that Chief Keef song that I don't like. Remember that song? Don't like. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. We listened uh -huh. to the remix at the end of that album, mm -hmm. and uh, that first rapper had that crazy verse at the beginning. But anyway, his name is Pusha T, and he is a rapper uh, from Virginia. Yeah, I remember that name. Yep, and he is um, signed to Kanye West's uh, Good Music label. Mm-hmm. He's actually got a pretty interesting history in the rap game. He used to be part of a group called Clips with his twin brother. No, he's a twin. Huh? Okay. Yep. Um, and they were they were produced by Pharrell in the Neptunes. Oh, okay. So their first their first couple albums were completely produced by the Neptunes. Uh, but uh, the group split up. His brother went on to do like some other things. Mm -hmm. uh, but Pusha T stayed in the rap game, and he eventually got signed to Kanye West label. Mm. And um, yeah, he's he's put out some pretty great bodies of work, and uh, this is probably his uh, to me his best body of work. Mm. It's actually a pretty short project. It runs only twenty one minutes long. It's seven tracks, but mm. it's uh, it's short. It's concise, and it's a really uh, really great rapping, packed with good music. Yeah, I would say so. Okay. Yeah. So um, push your T. Just a little bit of Nep background. Does it have a Neptune kind of feel to it? No. So this album is completely uh, produced by Kanye West. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this like is... Uh, chimp Chimpmunks today, huh? Uh, mm, I don't know if there's that much... Uh, <laughs> uh, Kanye, uh, you know, he needs to stop. He's wearing it out now. No. But everybody else is wearing it out, too. No. No one needs to stop that. The, yeah, they just stop the Chimpmunks. No, man. that's fire. Alvin. Anyway, uh, so Daytona <laughs> is the third studio album by American rapper Pusha T. It was released on May 25th, 2018 by Good Music and Def Jam Recordings. All right. It features guest appearances Def from... Jam. Yep. Uh, okay. From Rick Ross and Kanye West. All right. And um, Kanye West also served as an executive producer and produced all of its tracks. This is in 2018. Isn't Rick Ross incarcerated? No. Oh, that's somebody else. Yeah. That's uh, the guy that ran over the guy to do the car. Yeah, Suge Knight. Yeah, Suge Knight. Yeah, that's two different people. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. So, uh, oh, and what was kind of interesting about this time, um, Kanye, uh, he, he, he was, like, doing this thing where basically he wanted to uh, release an album every week for seven weeks and Every each week. album had seven tracks on it. So each of his artists, um, he did this for Pusha T. Oh, okay. The, every artist on his label. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. I got you. I was thinking he was himself. Okay. It, his he released an album. Mm -hmm. It was also Pusha T's album. Pusha T. It was okay. also um, mm -hmm. his female artist. Um, oh my God, I'm blanking on her name. She's fantastic. Uh, dang it. Anyway, it was her album. Dang, what? A, wow, why am I blank? Oh, Tiana Taylor. Tiana Taylor. Tiana, okay. Yeah, and then yeah. also not. He also produced a seven-track uh, studio album for Nas, um, mm. and he also released a collaboration album with Kid Cudi. Really? Yeah. So he had done all of these albums like consecutively, and mm. all of them were seven tracks, and all of them were completely produced by him. It was. Uh, it was kind of cool, like how he did that. Were they all good quality, good good albums? Uh, Any duds in there? Uh, you ain't gonna say. You won't. You don't want to say. Yeah, you probably better not say. You get somebody gonna get you. No, I don't care. <laughs> no, well, I think his album wasn't his that 
his particular album wasn't received very well, and the Nas album wasn't. Pusha T's wasn't? No, uh, Kanye's. Kanye's. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then put and Nas's because everybody was. Re- it was a big hype around the Nas album. Right. Right. And it was just. It just. It fell short. It fell short because yeah. you just think Kanye West and Nas. Nas. Yeah, you were thinking this is gonna yeah, be the it wasn't greatest that. thing since. It was some yeah. good tracks, but it just it fell short. Okay. But Nas actually a few years later ends up hooking up with another producer named Hit Boy, and they have a fantastic chemistry. It's like fire, huh? Super fire. They've released four albums in the last two I years. I bet you Kid Cudi's was good, huh? Kid Cudi and uh, Kanye's yeah. uh, collaboration album uh-huh. was really good. Uh-huh. That was actually really good. We, we're going to listen to that eventually. Okay. Uh, we might, yeah, I don't know, since we're in this era, we might uh, visit that pretty soon. All right. Cool. Okay, but anyway, uh, this is Daytona. This was the first out of all of those uh, albums mm-hmm. that had came out, and um, it was by Pusha T. And oh, he had to bring it then. Yeah, man. He's the first one out the gate. He was the first one out the gate. Oh, game. he better <laughs> had of all it, man. I'm looking forward to this. Let yeah, so uh, I'm not going to, I'm not really going to tell you too much about Pusha T as a rapper, just... Uh, I just want you to hear him and okay. tell me what you think about what he raps about and all that good stuff. So this first track is titled If You Know You Know, and this is produced by Kanye West. Okay. Here we go. Pulling up in that new toy, the wrist on that boy, rock star like Pink Floyd, waving that rude boy, I'm waving at you boy, ran off on the plug too like True Goy. If you know, you know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> If you know, you know. If you know, you know. I just Is happen that, to uh, be alumni. What most, uh, when, when you, when you drink a syrup, that's what the voices the they hear chip on. No. Everybody hears chip on. Child record soldier, you ain't often enough. A rapper turned <laughs> trapper can't morph into us. But a trapper turned rapper can morph into puff. So I like it right there. Get a bird, this nigga That's Oprah. nice. Yeah. Okay. Break I want to hear that again. Uh-huh. 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 U
He started out pushing before he was a rapper. Yeah, that's literally what all he's talking about in this whole song. Oh. That's the whole like he's saying if you know, you know, like bricklayers and ball shorts. Yeah, I kind of I caught that part. Coaching from the side <clears throat> of the ball courts, <clears throat> one stop like a Walmart. Walmart, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he's saying if you know about the carport, the trap door is supposed that's to be awkward. awkward. He's yeah. talking about like the trap doors in the cars where they put yeah. the weight when they're traveling it across state lines. And he's like, yeah, and it's, if you know, you know. Like, all the stuff he's saying is uh, like, if you know, no, you, you know. know. Yeah, if yeah. you don't, then I'm not going to explain it to he you. He ain't going to tell. Yeah. He ain't going to tell us. Which so. he is really actually explaining yeah, it. Really but. Is, <laughs> but. Too late now. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, all of these, uh, just everything is just cocaine bars. Like, this thing of ours, or this thing of ours, a fraternity of drug dealers ringing off. And just the beat is just perfect for... Yeah, it was like everything he said. It was the bomb. But let me ask you something though. When these guys, I know they, you know, when they coming up and they push, like he, you said, he was a pusher, right? I know he caught a lot of cases. Then when you go back and later on, and you done got, you know, elevated yourself, and you now a full fledged rapper, you make all this money. Don't they kind of like the police come back and listen to this because they admitting all of this stuff and they can get you for that? Not if it, if you're not doing it no more. Okay, it's like a. Statue of Limitations. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah. All right. So, yeah, that first beat is absolutely fire. Kanye is it off is. to a great start on that beat. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we'll roll into the next track. This is titled The Games We Play. Games people play. And uh, right this is Pusha T. Just can't stop it. Oh, producers. <laughs> produced by Kanye West. <laughs> track two, The Games We Play. <laughs> If they sample that, I'm a trip. Drug dealers <laughs> with gold diggers in them. And elevator condos on everything I love. Mm. This ain't a wave or a phase, cause all that shit fades. This lifestyle's forever when you made. They tweet about the length I made them wait. What the fuck you expect when a nigga got a Sound like a BB King guitar playing in here. Steady mm. bass. That's how Steel's BB King plays, man. And then the hook them horns this is, is nice too. This is my bodybuilding clients moving weight. Just add water, stir it like Drum a shake. Play yeah. amongst the stars like the roof yeah. and the yeah. rave. Get the table That's next old to mine. Make style, our models right? serve us race. These are the games we play. We are the names they say. This is the drug money your ex nigga claim. He makes to all of my young niggas. I am your ghost in your raid. This is my purple tape. Save up for rainy days. Uh. And baby mama wishes. Along with the cell never lies. I'm 2.2 2 and hey, cinnabon. New York and California. Yeah, look. Like the bunny for drug money. Who been paralyzed by the sight of a drug mummy. This ain't really drug for mummy. you. This is for the Goya Montoya. Who said I couldn't stop and afforded me. Goya Montoya. The only kingpin who ain't sinking me. Right, that is the games we play track two. What'd you think about that one, Dad? See this song right here. This one, like, uh, this was kind of like a blues song, mm -hmm. but he took put rap to it. It mm -hmm. was like a blues style that that, that guitar King. going through there. Bing, dang, dang, bang. Sound like Lucille talking to you. <laughs> bing, dang, dang, bang, dang, dang, dang. And then that look, then and then they hit you with them little horns. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> and then that drum was playing in the back. My man, that was that was like cool. That was like a nice bring old to new together to me. Yeah, I'm trying to see. Uh, that was all right right there. I like that. What the sample is? Heart and Soul by Booker T. Booker T. Mm -hmm. Averhart. Mm -hmm. Okay, but yeah, that song's fire. I love that song. He's just talking about. Just his uh, drug dealing and mm -hmm. his opulent lifestyle and uh, just basically saying like... Yeah, he was wild and out. Yeah, these are the games we play. Like, I like when he says this, uh, get play amongst the stars like the roof in the wraith. So uh, the in a in a in a wraith is a car, and in the oh, in okay. the roof of the car, there's like heard of a little stars lights. Oh yeah yeah yeah. 
So that's the line. And then he get, says, <coughs> get the table next to mine, make our bottle servers race. So he's just like, he's in the club. He's at a table. His other homies at another table. Uh, and they're buying so many bottles that the bottle servers yeah. got to race back and forth <laughs> and try to keep up with it. So like, I don't know. It's just a it's, cool cool yeah. visual that he made right there. But Man, see that, see how the stuff, man, that people think of uh, once they get some money. <laughs> they in a restaurant and make the daggone servers race <laughs> to the tables and stuff. Let's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> make them run, man. Yeah. Oh, man. See, that's cold. <laughs> that's cold. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah, Kanye's two for two on these beats so far. Okay, Let's yeah, see what he he's is. got. All right, this is. Uh, we well, ain't get no chipmunks on this one either. Mm-mm. Next track is track number three. This is titled "Hard Piano." Uh oh. Uh, this is produced by Kanye West, and this features Rick Ross. Uh oh. Okay, okay. We gonna see because this should be a good one, right? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, mm. Track three, "Hard Piano." Let's start it out with the piano. Never trust a bitch who finds love in a camera. She will fuck you, then turn around and fuck a janitor. Set the parameters. Uh, you either with the pro bowlers or the amateurs. I won't let you ruin my dreams or Harvey Weinstein the kid. Good morning, Matt Lauer. Can I live? Look at my new digs. The rooftop can host a painting sip for like 40. The war halls on my wall paint a war story. Had to find other ways to invest Cause you rappers found every way to ruin protects It's a nightmare, yeah I'm too rare amongst all of this pink hair Ooh. Still do the Fred Astaire on a brick <laughs> Tap, tap, throw the phone if you hear it click Art Basil in the bezel <laughs> Your bust down is bust down and don't match the metal Lower levels where you settle at I'm the pot calling the kettle black Alright It's for the sneaker hoarders and coke snorters. The Mondo Accords, the Grammy Awards, yo. Like a blow million dollars in the dust. Lord knows how many bottles out of bust. Still running through the models like I'm puff. Confront my problems like I'm Rollo in the bluff. Pushing all these politics is paradox. Chilling in a condo full of ready rock. My homie amputated, but gonna stand for something. I'm down to find a way to get a Grammy from it. Watching my success for some is bittersweet. Okay. Always keep the sharp shooters. I keep the coldest flows on the high seat. <laughs> and you can spot my hoes by their car <laughs> keys. <laughs> Another episode full of atrocities. It's double them baby money monopolies. You scared to see my face in a fancy place. So I debate my case versus Nancy Grace. It's flesh and blood till I'm fresh as fuck. Still hands on, sucker pressure luck. I can see myself. That sound like that that uh, chorus right there. Mm. That kind of sticks in your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a hard piano. What'd you think about that one, Dad? It was a hard piano, man. That's, that piano was like cold as can be going through the whole song, right? Mm-hmm. And then my boy's rapping lines was just nice. Yeah, it's just you know, it wasn't it's just like he didn't just go out and just smash it. It was just like he was just. Nice, yeah. You know what I mean. Just I, like I like that. I like the flow and stuff. Chill, you know? like uh-huh. lay by flow, mm-hmm. but they kind of sometimes like, nice is just as good as killing it. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? I think it's, especially for that beat too. Like it's like a uh, mellow beat, right? Right. And it's kind of like, uh, yeah, they just wrote it. They just wrote it perfectly. Yeah. They didn't do too much. They didn't even try to like overshine each other. I think they just both were on topic and yep, yep. did their thing. Yeah, and that's a good song. You like that hook that is, you said it's pretty. Uh, yeah, the hook was nice. Pretty catchy. Mm-hmm. I wonder where Santa that's Domingo where the is. Tingo. <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah. I'm back from Santo Domingo. It's the Dominican capital Republic. Of Dominican Republic, and it is a media described drug mecca. So you know what kids? What I was thinking about when I was listening to this this particular song, mm. uh, I'm like. A lot of these uh, rappers, man, they was they was heavy into drugs, 
but they wasn't like the guys that was out there on the corner slinging. You know what I mean? Mm. They was a up, up, up. You know yeah. where you never saw who they were. Like the, the, the distro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, cause, and I'm thinking to myself, man, all these, all these high level drug dealers had all this talent, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, so many of them that these, these were high level drug dealers had all of this talent yeah. locked up inside them. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? That just kind of, I was like, dang, that's a trip. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. well, even to get to a high level of selling drugs, I feel like you, you got gotta have some type of talent. Well, I was, yeah, street street sense, but to me, to have talent to be able to rap in you, I guess, I guess you know, your brain got to work a certain kind of way to be a good rapper too. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I yeah. guess you know, you got to have that certain kind of be wired, like you know, a certain kind of way. Yeah. But it just amazes me that all these guys, they wouldn't, they wouldn't like, a, like little foot soldiers mm-hmm. running around. I mean, a couple of them probably was. Yeah. Or at least they don't rap. <laughs> their, their story is, isn't that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But some of it sound like too true to be, you know, that sounds too think good a to lot be of not times true. Too, is like a lot of these guys are close to it <laughs> and close enough to narrate it. And know what's going on because they just saw it See and watched it, it right. and and observed right, it. Right, 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 right. Yeah, but yeah. You, you got knows? you make a good point. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, uh, Pusha T has a very um, uh, well documented beef with Drake and um, really, yeah. And Drake actually uh, uses that against Pusha T. That he don't really, he ain't really hard like he said. Yeah, he, he didn't really uh, <clears throat> sell the drugs that he talks about. He's just uh, narrating, perpetrating the fraud. Yeah, and saying <clears throat> you know he was close to it. He had friends that did it, but he wasn't. The I actual mean, it's guy easily verifiable in the in the streets, man. Yeah. All you got to do, you know, you could call up somebody and say, "Man, what's up with this?" You know, people know. Right, right, right. The, you know, the streets know. <laughs> I think we should do that. I think I'm going to do the, uh, the... That'll be our Patreon video. I'm going to break down the Drake and Pusha T beef okay. to you okay. after we're done with this. <laughs> so if you want to see that uh, Drake and Pusha T Well, you know, they certainly down. could fool a person like me because I'm thinking that the way he was talking. And that's the know. thing. It's like, I mean, he does it so well. It's like, I mean, you kind of like don't care because it's like he's just, just giving you that... Well, the, the, it's the like you're watching a movie. Yeah. You know, it's like okay, as long as the movie is done well, like I don't care uh, if the, the you know it's not yeah, real. I know it's not real, but I can go you to can that enjoy world. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I got you. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, the next track this is track number four. Oh yeah, if you guys want to see the uh, Pusha T and Drake beef breakdown that we're about to do on, on check Patreon, it out on Patreon, yes, that's gonna yes. be available for our two upper tiers. Yep, yep. yep. All right. Uh, so next track is track number four. Come back, baby. Produce by baby come back you can blame it all on me no no i don't know well who sings that song uh daryl hall and john oates they love when you drop the uh <laughs> the songs and they, they go they go look them up and they're like daryl oh, hall and man, john oates that was, that's yeah yeah <laughs> all right this is uh oh hall and oates hall and oates oh yeah <laughs> you didn't know their first names did you <laughs> Okay. He, think, he thought he was cool and say the whole name. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Uh, <laughs> you <yeah>. like that? <laughs> I had to put it together. Uh, oh, I know that song. Yeah, I yeah, know you song. know that yeah, song. Yeah, you yeah, heard yeah. that? They still play that. Yeah, that's video. that's like yeah. Mm-hmm. They, that'd be in movies and all kind of stuff. Yeah. All right, this is Comeback Baby, produced by Kanye West. Here we go. I wanna talk to all you addicts out there. Oh. This got to suffer, Greg Big Joan. Who's the who's the producer? Kanye West. West. Nobody just can't leave that hair on alone. Hair on. Have you tried? Touch down. I'm so grateful. Oh, Number so he low. Busted they into that. Thankful. He they boom. say don't let money busted change open the you. Door. That's how we know money ain't you. Bitch, I've been had. Bitches been bad. We buy big boats. Bitch, I'm sin bad. Down right to be hanging around Bitch, Kanye. We been too full. Long. All my he new boys. We like kid folk. Like be more burst boom. <laughs> DC glass pipe. VA scent bells. About that trap life. Blew through thousands. We made millions. Cocaine soldiers. Want civilians, bought hoes Hondas, took care children, lit my pastor, built out buildings, wrapped on classics, I've been brilliant, now we blend in, we chameleons, ah! Never have I been locked up in a world of oh. misery, oh, I need you darling to set me free, go ahead y'all, that's nice. Go out of my mind. Yeah. I can't. Who else got the luxury?
luxury yeah, to drop when he want cause nobody I else knew to it. fuck with me. <laughs> what knew a show it. off. Nigga, wrist for wrist, let's have a glow off. Fuck it, brick for brick, let's have a blow off. If we go by connections made, I can still climb ladders when complexions fade. Yeah. White yeah. on white, that's the tester. Black on black, that's the Tesla. I'm in. Mean, yeah. Can't escape the scale <laughs> if I tried. Interstate trafficking's alive. Push. Never have I been locked oh, up man. in a world of misery. <laughs> I need you, darling, to set me free. See, my, I'm looking forward Come to back, this. Baby. When you get to the end of that, I know you're ready to bust back yeah, in. Right. <laughs> oh, baby. I'm about to go out of Here we go. Mind. Whoa. Still fresh off the boat, niggas. Don't make me super so niggas. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, nigga. the good die young. All dogs go to heaven. It's really just mamas falling out on the reverend. Oh, I play musical chairs with reverend. these squares. Rich Flair before they was Rick Flair's cocaine concierge. All right, that is Comeback Baby. What you think about that one, Dad? <laughs> I like the switch up on that, man. And, the, and then when he, once you had the guy in there singing, um, and then he gone back to the rapping. Uh-huh. Man, every time he came back to the rapping, man, he was just killing it. Yeah. He just ki- he just murdered those lines, man. You <laughs> know did, what I mean? He did. Yeah, that was, a, that was a cool song, yeah, too. Yeah, I think that was one of my favorites, Yeah, that too. was a cool like, song. Uh, same reason, too. Just the way the sample, you got the sample at the hook, uh-huh. and then it just comes back. It hits so hard on those verses. It's, oh, man. Yeah, that, that, was that was song hard. was tough. I <laughs> love that song. Oh, you know what this, oh, that's one thing I thought about I wanted to say. What? The bass in here it was so hard. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if to me, I, I I hate when people like come down the street. They got a bomb system in their car, mm-hmm. and they got this big subwoofer back there, and that mug is booming. But it sounds like the, the the subwoofer is busted because mm-hmm. it's so loud. It's going, yeah, all of that you know that that yeah. distortion. And I could see somebody banging that song yeah. with that bass <laughs> so loud, and it's like. <laughs> you know, so anyway, that's the kind of what it reminded yeah. me of. So that you got to, if you're gonna play some bass, let your bass be clear, let it be tight. You know what it be too? It's always like people be having those uh their license plates be a loose. So when the bass is hitting, it makes the, oh, light, yeah, make, yeah. the license plate rattle, and that's what I think that leads to a lot of that. And that could sound. be, yeah, yeah, it could be because it sounds so. I'm mean, like, yeah, I don't, dude, like it, it would sound better if you just turn it down so you ain't got all that vibration and distortion. But anyway, that's, that's that funny. when I heard that bass in there, man, I said, man, that bass is hard. You didn't man. recognize I, the sample? I didn't recognize that George Jackson. No, I didn't recognize him, man. I, the voice sound familiar, mm-hmm. but I'm not familiar with George Jackson. I probably am, but I heard him on, in something else, in a group maybe. Um, the truth shall make you free by the mighty Hannibal. I've heard of the mighty. And Hannibals. I can't do without you by George Jackson. Mm-mm. No, I heard of mighty Hannibals, but I didn't. I didn't. You know, they wasn't like prevalent. I mean, at least not in my. You know, when I was listening to stuff about man. Okay. You know, more like the 60s. Mm. All right, so we'll go ahead and move into the next track then. Uh, this is track number five. It's titled Santeria. Santeria. All righty. And this is produced by Kanye West. Okay. And uh, Ye has been four for four on these beats. He has. <laughs> I'd get it to him. Yeah, you went crazy on these beats. All these beats are super fire. Uh, okay, here is track five, Santeria. Now that the tears dry and the pain takes over, let's talk this payola, payola. You killed God's baby when it wasn't his will and blood spill. We can't talk this shit over, over. The Lord is my shepherd. I am not sheep. I am just a short stone's throw from the streets. Come on, no, no. Uh-huh. Los Angeles is burning. Mm. Es el fuego que yo conozco. Who's singing that? Oh, 070 oh, Shake. Ya te va la mañana. Oh, okay. Ah. Ah. Los Angeles is burning. Es el fuego que yo conozco. Es el fuego que yo. Of all the things I've ever paid for, know that it's no price tag when I wanna. Ah. Los Angeles is burning. Es el fuego que yo conozco. Es el fuego que yo. All right, that is 
is track number five, Santeria. What did you think about that one, Dad? That was a very um, uh, dark and um, a violent song. Yeah. Uh, the music in it was, I mean, the production and everything was tight. I mean, it was a good production. Uh, just a dark song. Uh, yeah. Violent song. He's talking about um, his, I think, uh, his friend or brother or somebody got killed. Uh, the tragic murder of his friend and road manager, Dede uh, Santeria. The Way of the Saints is a Yoruba religion that uses mediums and divination to communicate to spirits and deities. Dark. To cope with the pain, Push speaks, on, uh, speaks to the spirit of his friend, Devon, sharing his battles of vengeance and distress mm-hmm. over what sadly happened. Mm-hmm. Um also note that Pusha ironically dedicates the song Santeria to his manager, whom Push described as always being in church. And so that uh, Spanish hook that 0707 angels shakes, she says, you're leaving in the morning. Aha, the angels will wait. It's the fire that I know. It's the fire that I know. You're leaving in the morning. The angels will wait. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that was an interesting song. Pretty yeah. deep. Pretty deep and dark yeah for sure yeah it was a, it was okay Tom. i mean it's like it ain't like something you can boom, you know mm-hmm. bob to mm-hmm. it's just something you can listen to yeah you know definitely a more uh personal introspective song from right. Pusha T. Then. right it wasn't a, it, it was a good song yeah i mean as far as uh uh the creation of the song the, the um the like i said the uh the production of the song mm-hmm. uh but the the message, you know, that's that's a personal thing. He's he's just putting out there, you know, his thoughts, I guess. Yeah. You know, yeah. All right, cool. We'll go ahead and roll to the next track. This is track number six is titled "What Would Meek Do?" Mm. And this is a reference to another rapper, Meek Mill. Meek Mill. Hey. How do you know Meek Mill? I don't know. <laughs> You're so random. <laughs> I don't. I just. I heard the name and it just never it never left okay. it never left my mind. Well, that is that is what he's talking about. Uh, <laughs> it's not random, funny. man. It's like a it's not random, man. <laughs> but like you don't be knowing, like uh, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he's, I can't help it. I hear things. Yeah, just, yeah, like, it just, you know, yeah. I get it, it just lodges in my mind. <laughs> so when you said Meek, I was like Meek Mill. I don't know that. I don't know. Hell, Meek Mill could be standing in front of me. I don't know the hell he is <laughs> for real. Yeah, you know. Um, but yeah, here is a uh, track six. What would Meek do? This is produced by Kanye West, also featuring Kanye West. So we get a Kanye uh, verse on here as well. Oh, okay. So here's track six. What would Meek do? Niggas talking shit, push. How do you respond? I'm top five and all of them die long. I am the hope, the dope dealers won. Price in the quote, the dope dealers want. Feds taking pictures like it's GQ. GQ. This Aviani collarbone is see through. Out the ghost screaming Machiavelli. Hail Mary, the scale fairy. Two sides to every coin, so we bail ready. Bail ready. How do you respond? I let the monies and the fools talk. I let the Jews and the Hughes talk. Watch face came with a fuse box. Fuse box. Mm. Chanel's on your bitch, the coupe is 320, the roof's hit or miss It's on the block, dude, if you mm. ain't driving wild black, do they stop you? Well, MAGA hats let me slide like a drive through That phone call from Ricky still hazy When heaven got an angel named Avery Nice, who know what that feel like? No more hiding the scars, I show them like seal, right? How do you respond? That is what would Meek do? Track number six. What do you think about that one, Dad? That was an interesting song. I like the uh, uh, the uh, the, the um, content was slamming. I mean, the rapping was slamming. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the music was kind of, and then it sounded like it was uh, like it was 
m- messing up, but you, they was doing it on purpose. I mean, it was the fact, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. That, you, that, mm-hmm. that part. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was kind of, you know, unique. Yeah. Um, he was talking about what would Meek do, but it was somewhere in there. He said so, another rapper. Um, oh, Tupac do. Tupac do, mm-hmm. you know. So, yeah, I mean, the content and what he was talking about, I, I was, you know, I was feeling it. You know, he was, uh, you know, giving some very good colorful illustrations yeah. you know what i mean mm-hmm. so i like that uh that he, the way he did that so it was a well put together song to me yeah. i mean you know, what do you think about it was it good yeah i like that you song like it? it's, it's a cool song it's not my favorite one off of here uh i feel like uh there's well, there's other better songs but yeah, yeah but I don't, West I don't, didn't have that beat like you could you know but it was like yeah that was kind of the weird part of it, it had that yeah, 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 all the way through. So, so like, sort of kind of eerie kind of song. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. a sound. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. It wasn't definitely one of my favorite on the on the album, but it wasn't a bad one. Yeah, it's not a bad song. Yeah. Okay, cool. We'll go ahead and roll to the last track. So, this is the track that caused all the commotion and controversy around this album. Really? Which was track seven. This is Infrared, oh, and this snap. is the track that. Uh, pretty much sparked the whole uh, Pusha T and Drake beef. Really? Oh, snap. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, (laughs) yeah, here we go. Track 7, Infrared, produced by Kanye West. Infrared. The game's fucked up, niggas beats is banging, nigga your hooks did it. The lyric pinning equal to Trump's winning. Ain't even recognize Hove and Till Annie. So I don't tap dance for the crackers and sing Mammy. Cause I'm cold to juggle these flows and nose candy, yeah. Ferrari, my 40, it blew the candles out. Tom Brady, you niggas, I had to scramble out. Yo, I eat to it. Let uh, Steven talk streaming in Shazam numbers. It. I'll ensure that you get in every gram from us. Let's cram numbers. Easily, the only rapper so more dope than me was Easy E. Oh. How could you ever write these wrongs? When you don't even write your songs. Ooh. But let us all play along. We all know what niggas for real been waiting on. Push. Whoa. Oh, you messing with your boy, yes. <laughs> Damn, he talking hard, too. <laughs> I bet he's short, ain't he? Oh, push it to you? Yeah. They're all short. Drake, ain't he? Drop the mic. He gone. Let's push T five eleven. No, no, he ain't that short. I thought he was like an exhibit kind of tall guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, that is track number seven. The <laughs> ending track of this album is titled Infrared. What'd you think about that one, Dad? Man, he's talking. He, he's talking fighting words. Yeah. I mean, like for real, that, them, those are fighting words, I, you know. So I was thinking, you know, he little bitch, you know, short guy. Yeah. And I, I always visualize Drake as being like a real tall guy. He he's not tall. I don't know. I, I don't know. Tall he is. Let's see. Uh, it says he's I six think, foot. Okay. They yeah. they so, about the yeah, same height. Same height yeah. All right. I was thinking, for some reason, Pusha T is. I thought Pusha T was short. And yeah. I thought Drake was gonna be right here. Yeah, yeah. And if they ever met, Drake would be down. <laughs> cracking him upside the top of his head, but now uh, that was a good song. Man. Yeah, that beat is so far. It I was love killer. That it was killer. I love that little infrared. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they put it throughout uh-huh. the whole beat. Uh-huh. Oh, that beat is fire. It was fire, but the words was even more fire. Yeah. You know? So I feel like you probably caught some of the references that he's saying, but yeah, there's a lot I of caught stuff. a bunch of that. I was like, like when he started about Trump the Russians. And then, then he come back down and he was talking about San Quentin. And then he come back and said something about the codes missing the CEO. All this, all that stuff was blending in. And he was like, I believe in myself and the codes and the Kendrick. He's like, he putting himself in that group with them, mm-hmm. you know. And, and like, he just 
And then he says, he let, the, dish your boy. let the sock puppets play in their roles in the gimmicks. Yeah. And then he even, even his first line, niggas beats is banging, your hooks did it. Like, so he's not, he's like Tell giving him a rest- Write your own stuff. Yeah, you don't even write your own raps. Uh, you you uh, like yeah, you you make good songs and stuff, but uh, like you don't you're not a real like right writer and artist. rapper like mm-hmm. um, and then even this line, it was written like Nas, but it came from Quentin, so it was written is a Nas album. Okay, so he says it was written like Nas, uh-huh. but it came from Quentin. So Quentin Miller was actually exposed as one of Drake's ghostwriters. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, I got you. So there was this whole beef before the Pusha T beef that Drake had with Meek Mill. Ooh, he, that is infrared. Didn't nobody know. Could nobody see it. Yeah, Didn't yeah. Nobody see it, but he saw it. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Well, Can't... he had got exposed before. So in his first beef with Meek Mill, Meek mm. Mill uh, released the reference tracks that had... Um, Quentin Miller's vocals he wrote and and like produced some of Drake's big hits mm-hmm. so that was the ex- first exposure everybody was like oh Drake didn't write that and like you know blah blah, blah. but the, uh, the, the objectives if they're artists they're just trying to make good music I mean who can I mean yes true but when you're talking about rapping Okay, they they, uh, they take sort of they that take kind of it, stuff yeah, personal. Yeah, yeah, they take it seriously. Yeah, yeah, so, so I get it. But so that was the whole thing. So then he's kind of going back to that. He's it was written like Nas, but it came from Quentin. Quentin okay. So it was like, uh, and then oh, and then he goes into the he's talking about the CEOs blinded by the glow is different. He's talking about Birdman. Uh-huh. Uh. He talking about Birdman? Yeah. Uh, he well, he do want to start some stuff. Yeah, so there was this whole thing like how Birdman don't be paying his artists. It was this whole controversy about how Lil Wayne couldn't release the Carter 5 for a really long time because he wasn't getting paid and uh, Birdman wouldn't release his album. Yeah. So Lil Wayne and Birdman kind of had they this had a t- tiff going well, on. That, that, that makes sense. And so Pusha T's just shooting at all of this he stuff. He's putting it all out there. And Tom Brady references. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, look at this fool. He clowning, man. Nah, he, he is clowning. crazy over here. But yeah, Drake didn't like that. <laughs> and, I bet he did. And uh, if I was Drake, I wouldn't have liked it either. They had a they had a very interesting back and forth. So we're gonna get into that. Uh, we're gonna break down the Drake beef. With JC, they they think how Drake he look out, you know, like he don't look like a the, your typical like a gangster rapper. Mm-hmm. But they they be they be mis to me. I think they uh, underestimate Drake because Drake is like I mean Drake is harder than most. Drake, I think, and he's t- I mean I mean he ain't no joke. And when you he can't get play to rapping, mm-hmm. when he get to rapping, mm-hmm. rapping, mm-hmm. Ah. Yeah, all I can say <laughs> is the cream that I can say the cream rises to the top. Yeah, Drake. So I'm gonna play. So we'll play some of these disses, and I'll let you decide who you feel like won won the battle. Well, this one right here was. That was cold though, right? Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. We're gonna yeah, get into it, it. Well, uh, I'm glad you enjoyed this album. If you guys uh, like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Also, drop a comment and let us know who you think won the Pusha T and Drake beef. <laughs> and if you want to check out uh, the exclusive Patreon content that we're about to record, uh, we're gonna go through this Drake beefs and Ooh, I let my dad wait. pick. I can't pick wait. the winner. <laughs> and uh, yeah, check out our Patreon links in the description. Uh, check out the merch. Copy a mug, a sticker. Oh yeah, check this out. I'll, I'll show you guys. We got the got the sticker on the laptop here. Nice, yes, sir. Nice. So yeah, you can get you a sticker. Uh, they're really big, actually. I thought they. I didn't think they were gonna be that big, but oh, let me show you that. I don't think I showed you. I didn't get to see the stickers. See that's the first time you showed me those. Boy, that was hard. Nice. Yeah, that's nice, right? Wow. Yeah. So yeah, you can get you a sticker. You can get you a mug, a hoodie, a t-shirt. Support the channel. Show yeah, some love. Yeah, support the channel. Put them stickers all over your car, windows, everything. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Refrigerator everywhere. Uh, yeah. So cop that merch. Appreciate all the support, guys. We'll see you next time. Appreciate it. Bye.